right, guys, welcome back to another episode of The Silent Age. We're getting into Chapter 5 today, I believe. So let's go ahead and continue that. Just got inside the hospital, and this chapter is called The Corpse. So that's sure to be interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, hey, there's a tire iron. Uh, can we get in anywhere? No. Okay, well, let's go fix this ambulance. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so these are all locked. I'm gonna dig through stuff and see if we can find anything. Oh. Scissors we might need. Another skeleton. Oh, it's the Reginald Lambert, no address. They probably didn't put like stuff on that with these tags, I guess. Okay, so that is the old man though. lights over here so I'm imagining we need to use a car battery to connect to this Wow and he has a key for the cabinets okay so we stole his key let's get in here and let's let's get on the road with the car man drive somewhere. Uh, we gotta read the file number, the tag, toe tag. It looks like he's trying to put it in his pocket. Oh, you know what? I gotta use the scissors to cut off the tag. 
dingus. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm smarticles. I got education. Come on, bro. That took far too long. Let's go in here. Finally get the right thing. Yes, yes. Let's go. Nice. One insult below insult growth. Like right. Okay. I'm traveling a lot today. All right, now we're cruising. Here, out on the road, everything seems so normal. Same moon, same night sky. After an hour of driving, it's easy to forget all about that dead world back there. How could Lambert have survived, though? If he came from the future, how did he not die along with everybody else? Because he's you. I just saw his body in the morgue. Now I'm driving out to talk to him alive. How does that work? Do you just leave a copy of yourself every time you use the box? Is that it? Are there copies of me all over the place now? What if he's not there? What if I changed something and he's not alive at all? Maybe all of this has been completely pointless. Maybe there's nothing I can do after all. Maybe these will be my last days, along with everybody else's. Ugh, the thought ties my stomach in knots. No, I better just not think about it and carry on. Did I bring enough gas? God, I hope I brought enough gas. I mean, it's cool art. It's pretty. Chapter six, the island. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna be putting two chapters together. Danger Crocodile. We got a trophy, got some mail. Man. Yeah, because it's nighttime. Hmm. Nice. An animal pump, that's what we can use to empty that boat. I like the bullet holes in the sign. Man. <sighs> okay. Did we just screw ourselves? Okay, so we're just leaving then. I don't think that's going to be enough gas in real life. If I remember, I both suck up a lot of gas. Okay. When I was a little lad, and so my mother told me, Way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. I don't love the sea shanty. Okay. Crocodile sign again. Hmm. 
there we go. Okay, so I had to be that panel. I had the right idea in the beginning. There's another Finding Nemo fish. We've seen some of those before. Okay, come on. It'll be time to have a snack, I guess. Just barbecue a fish to death. So. Okay, well then eat it, big boy. Oh, we're gonna feed the fish to the crocodile. I'm a genius. Except for, not really. Kind of like, you know, the opposite of a genius. chainsaw. <sighs> okay, we can put the alcohol from the camping trailer into the chainsaw. And it'll run for a minute. Before it blows up. Imagine putting av gas in the chainsaw. Unmixed, too. Just American Psycho right here. Full bore. There's a gun missing, which should scare us. It's got all those uh, weird shapes. find a way to start a fire. Ah, there's the matches. Okay. Cool, cool. Now we start the fire. Okay, we got his 
zebra rug. Nice. The hatch is a trapdoor. There's a wine opener to it. There we go. Okay, we're currently out of tools. Wine cellar. Now it says we can break down the door with something. Okay. We got a light bulb. We pick up a lead pipe or something. Woodworking table. you're gonna give me something to break down that door with hmm. ah but it did give me this oh and there's a hatchet interesting can I get in here can I go back out of here don't see a use for this fire extinguisher except for to bash down the door. Okay, what about the stick? Okay, so... I wonder if we need to go into here and use the water that's in the fire and extinguish around those picture things maybe like the vines that's okay got it wow that took me way too long Foil hat. We've got another fish in here. We got a lava lamp. We're gonna plug it in over here. Whoa. Get the bottle of wine. back time zones then we're gonna put this bottle of wine in this slot far out. Yeah, far out. Only took us 30 oh god he's gonna kill me 
Stop right there. Whoa, whoa, wait. Uh, Mr. Lambert, sir, it's me, Joe. I don't know you. What are you doing in my house? You, you, you sent me here, remember? I've done no such thing. For an intruder, you're not very bright, you know that? For all the commotion you caused getting in here, you might as well have brought a bulldozer. Now, you have exactly five seconds to explain what you're doing here. Or so help me God, I'm pulling this trigger and sending you on your way. Five. I, I, I was sent here. Four. By you. Three. You told me to find you, to warn you about the end of the world. Two. You were old, uh, with white hair, and you got shot. Oh, God, please don't shoot me, Mr. Lambert. This, this, you gave me this. Uh, it's an inter-something, uh, chrono. It's a time machine. I gave you that? Yes! I've never seen anything like it. But on the back, that's my family signet. I made this? It's simply magnificent. I gave this to you? Why? Who are you? Name's Joe, sir. I, I'm, I'm just a janitor at the Archon building. I found you in a room with a big, round door in the basement labs this morning, and you, you were dying. You said you'd come from 40 years in the future to stop the end of the world. I, I, I guess I was the only one around, so you gave me this and told me to find you and tell you all this, and I've been there. The future, I mean. A bunch of times. And you were right, Mr. Lambert. Everyone's gone. My God, so it did come to pass. They really did it, those greedy goddamn bastards. I told them this would happen. Wait, I was dying? How? You said you've been shot. I had to actually find you at the, uh, uh the morgue to get this address. Shot? By whom? No, wait. Don't say anything else. You succeeded in finding me, which means anything you tell me from this point on could alter the course of action that brought you to my doorstep. The less I know, the better. So, you've seen the future. What did you see? It's like a bad dream, sir. Everyone's gone. Buildings are coming apart. It's all just quiet. What happened, Mr. Lambert? It is Doctor, Doctor Lambert. And considering all the effort you just went through to find me, not to mention bearing witness to the horrific outcome of the biggest breakthrough in the history of science, I suppose I owe you some kind of explanation. I was 24 when I got hired by Archon or Athena, as it was called back then. Athena was one of the many weapons R&D companies formed during the Second World War. Unlike other R&D companies that had retooled themselves to pursue peacetime activities after the war, Athena had made enough money to continue chasing the next big thing in defense technologies. They were betting the farm on post-war Soviet expansion, raising the level of government paranoia to create a lucrative market for esoteric weapons research. I'd say they made the right bet. Still a theoretical physicist at MIT, my thesis on the possibility of time travel via dimensional membranes got published shortly after I was hired in 1961. Company heads were so impressed, they gave me a team and a budget. Development exceeded even my own expectations. And after only six years, we had the first primitive version of the time machine up and running. Our first successful trials involved sending simple objects into the future with a timed return. But with Archon running out of money, that was all the company bigwigs needed to secure a big fat contract with the Department of Defense. 
Apparently, we had sold them on the idea that the technology could be used to go back in time and strangle communism in its cradle. The reality, of course, was that it couldn't. Due to the laws of causality, you can't travel back in time beyond the point where time travel was invented. And sooner or later, we had to explain that to our benefactors. When they started pushing for progress reports, Archon management had to come clean, but instead chose to ease government concerns by claiming the technology could be used to bring back advanced weapons from the future. But this, too, was a lie. At this point, we'd already had our first of many human trials, and we knew there would be no weapons. In fact, our results were as terrifying as they were baffling. Time pilots returned frenzied and confused, raving about empty streets and human remains. At first, we assumed the city had suffered a Soviet attack in the near future and had been evacuated as a result. But as we pushed on further, the terrible reality became clear. Time pilots started returning fatally ill, dying within a day or two from painful convulsions. Some never returned. We lost several pilots, machine prototypes, and other equipment. When the first contamination erupted in the lab, we were completely unprepared, losing three lab technicians to what we later identified as an incredibly aggressive airborne virus. Although we weren't equipped to handle biohazards of this magnitude, management insisted we contain and study it. To keep our pilots and the virus alive long enough to study, we co-opted experimental cryotechnology from another project, Lazarus, and established a makeshift virus lab. Once again, the bigwigs managed to spin our setbacks into a success story for the Department of Defense now claiming that the virus could be cultivated for use as a biological weapon. The team threatened to resign, but outrage was swiftly quenched by promises of massive salary increases and stock options. I didn't take the bribe. I'd witnessed the lethal efficiency of the virus firsthand. Posture check. I knew there was only one way this was going to end, so I handed in my resignation and set up shop out here. For over a year, I've been working to recreate the technology to bring me back in time and prevent mankind's extinction from ever happening. And now you're here, the harbinger of doom at my doorstep, wearing a boiler suit. Who could have imagined that Judgment Day would begin like any other Monday in May? In any case, unfathomable as it may be that you were able to bring this information to me, knowing is only half the battle. Preventing the outbreak will require more than just your tenacity. Me? Wait, what? Yes, I'm afraid I must rely on you one more time. You must go back to Archon and prevent the outbreak. No, no, that that's, uh, I mean... I'm really honored and everything, but... Believe me, you're the last person in the world I want to entrust with this. And I mean that quite literally. But by this time tomorrow, the entire city will have succumbed to chaos, panic, and death. You're here now, and you're all I've got. Wait, but what about you? Can't you fix this, Doc? Don't you have a plan? I can't go myself, because that would break the law of causality. The only reason you are here to warn me now is because I was there to send you. And the only reason I was there to send you is because I was able to bring my work to fruition here. But... We've no time to waste. It's the only way. You told me you found me this morning, correct? Well, yes, but... That means I failed to stop it. And the outbreak has already begun. The 
time pilot for today's trials must have brought the virus back from the future, which then somehow got out of the containment chamber and spread. That pilot is patient zero. I need you to destroy the supercomputer system system. controlling the time machine. All the research data is stored there too. You must destroy it before the time machine departs. I'm reconfiguring your device to send you back one day earlier. This should allow you ample time to return to Archon and get inside. On the other shore from here, about 500 yards down the road, is a rest stop. You'll find a van there, fueled and ready to go. Oh, I already have a ride. Which won't be there yesterday, you ninny. Now stop interrupting me. One last thing, and I need you to listen carefully because this is very, very important. Make sure you do not meet the earlier version of you. Why? What will happen? No one knows for sure. It's one of the conundrums not yet accounted for. There are theories, of course. None of them pleasant. Now, let's get you ready. Oof. I do dig the van, though. How did I get myself into this? I nearly got killed trying to reach Dr. Lambert, thinking he had a plan. And it turns out it's me. I'm the plan. At least I don't have to walk back. This van's not as cool as the ambulance, but it has its charm. It's cooler, bro. It's a and it sure was nice of him to pack me lunch. I wish he'd pack me a can opener for the beans, though. And some gas for the Bunsen burner. But I'm sure I'll think of something. I've got several hours of driving ahead of me, after all. It'll be almost morning before I get to Archon. I just hope I have enough time. Alright guys, that was the end of those two chapters. It's going to be a longer video. I'll make sure to edit out some of the parts where I spent... You know 15 minutes searching for the same thing but as always if you like the video smash that like button if you want to see more make sure to hit subscribe and as always take it easy